Today, we're doing a complete deep dive into Amazon's new announcements about fee changes in 2024. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that is our Helium 10 Weekly Buzz, where we give you a rundown of all the goings-on in the Amazon, Walmart, and e-commerce world. And actually, normally, we give you training tips of the week, and we also give you uh, Helium 10 new features. But because of the recent Amazon fee announcements, we are dedicating this whole episode to that plus the news, because there's like... 12 or 13 news items. I don't know what happened last week. There wasn't too much. This week, we are inundated with e-commerce news, and we're actually going to first just go ahead and take a deep dive into what exactly the announcement was, and we're going to take it step by step. We're going to read it together, most of this announcement, and try and break down as much of this as possible. And let me just you know caveat this. First of all, This is not something that's happening overnight. It's not even something that's happening this year. It's not even something that's happening in January or February. We've got plenty of time to prepare for this. And based on customer feedback, which there's a lot of negative feedback out there, who knows? This could change before it actually goes into effect, which is currently scheduled for the 1st of March. So let's go ahead and hop into the actual announcement, all right? The the letter that came from Amazon. I'm going to read the one that was uh, from Darmesh. Vice President of World's Wide Selling Partner Services at Amazon. And, you know, starts off the the message, you know, talking about the the growth of, of delivery and things like that. All absolutely true stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff for Amazon sellers. How fast shipment are. And then he talks about, hey, you know, we, we've had to evolve our fulfillment fee structure to create more discrete fees for specific capabilities. Discreet. I don't know. I don't know if, if I would have used that word. Some some of us might not think it's very discreet, uh, right? But the key here is he says this year we are breaking our fees into fees for sending our products into our fulfillment network, aka inbound, and shipping products out of our network, aka outbound. This allows us to create incentives for sellers to use our network more efficiently so we can share the cost savings, including the ability to avoid inbound fees altogether and pay lower overall outbound fees. Says we're excited to provide sellers with more transparency and more control and this and that. And so he says below, you can read the email we just sent to our selling partners outlining the fee updates we are implementing next year. So, you know, just a kind of overview here, nothing major yet, right? And as this email starts, they, they again go, go into, you know, some details about how Amazon is doing, you know, since at the end of July, more than 1.8 billion units were delivered, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But let's get now to the actual thing that we're interested in, which is the, the fee changes. Okay. They try and summarize it at the beginning, right? They say, after these changes, we expect that sellers will see an average increase of 15 cents in fees per unit sold. And they note that, hey, which is true. All right, let's, let's be honest here. This is significantly less than the increases announced by other logistics partners. And, and just remember, guys, Amazon is kind of a logistics partner. You know, they're, they're even, you know, it was announced at Accelerate. They're even going to be kind of like competing with UPS and FedEx where we can actually contract Amazon to ship, for, you know, non-Amazon orders. So, so view them as a logistics partner. And yes, it's absolutely true that, you know, other fee increases by their postal service, UPS, FedEx, is more than what Amazon is doing. But, you know, I know some of you are saying, oh, I don't care. Uh, I don't use UPS and FedEx. I use Amazon, and that's what that's what matters to me. All right, but I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to keep it uh, honest and, and, and real here. All right, they, they say, hey, another very true thing, again, all right, so this is kind of like the calm before the storm. Let's, let's butter up you Amazon sellers with some facts uh, before we kind of drop this fee. And, and But hey, it's true. Amazon's not lying here. It says, Amazon fulfillment fees will continue to remain an average of 70% less ex- expensive than two-day shipping methods offered by other major third-party logistics providers. 100% true, which is why I've always said, like, I don't, it doesn't make any sense that the FTC is coming down on Amazon for the buy with you know, Prime and, and how they, they they favor Prime listings. Like, we love Amazon Prime. We can't ship $6, you know, two-day delivery across the country like, like Amazon can, all right? So the first part of this is going to be inbound placement service fee, all right, for standard and large bulky size products. 
And this says, says to reflect our cost of distributing inventory to fulfillment centers close to customers. We know that Amazon does that. So just in case you guys are new Amazon sellers, you send your uh, your your inventory, you know, from your warehouse or from China, whatever, to like, you know, one or two addresses. That's not where Amazon fulfills from. Amazon then takes it and spreads it across the whole country, right? And understandably, that, that, that costs money. Now, these inbound placement fees are going to average 27 cents per unit for standard size and $1.58 per per unit for large bulky size products, all right? So it's gonna fall somewhere between there. It says, we're gonna give you the option to pay reduced fees or even no fee based on whether you send your shipment to a single location or multiple locations. These are gonna go in effect March 1st and the fees will be charged 45 days after products are received, all right? And then we can go to the inbound placement fee page for more uh, details. Now, this is interesting because like we don't know the details, you know, like, you know, what would be great is, hey, it, it's telling us to 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 go to three different locations. Right. And, and they're all on the West Coast. Like if I'm if I'm on the West Coast, is anybody going to complain about that? No. Nah. And, and and that's actually going to result in no fees. Sure. I'll take that. Now, where this comes into consideration, though, is if all of a sudden you're on the West Coast and now it's telling you, hey, you are going to need to send this inventory across the country. Right. Now, that's where all of a sudden it's like, all right, this is going to be kind of interesting. If you actually click on the new inbound placement service details, there's some more information here, right? There's It's called premium service. You can send your inventory to re a single receive center, and this is going to have a fee. And then, for example, this fee may vary by inbound location with higher fees for shipment sent to locations in the West, versus other parts of the country. So boom, there goes my my scenario, right? Where I'm like, hey, this could actually work out. It literally just tells me it's gonna be more expensive to send locations to the West. So if you're on the East Coast, maybe you're, you're chill, like you're, you're good. But, but if you're on the West Coast, like me, this might mean a fee, right? And then it says discounted service as opposed to premium. Uh, send your inventory to multiple inbound locations yourself for a reduced fee or no fee, all right? Which is kind of like what we have now. We, we're not paying a placement fee right now. So it's kind of like business as usual for you. Now, what is this inbound placement service fee? All right. There's a table here. It goes by item size, weight, uh, and then if you're doing the premium or discounted. So for example, if you're a small standard or and it's one pound or less, that send to a single location is going to cost between 21 and 30 cents. All right. If you're at large standard, max 18 by 14 by eight, all right? Um, if it's less than 12 ounces, falls between 23 cents and 34 cents. Let's, let's go all the way up to three pounds, 42 to 68 cents. So the max is 68 cents, and that's only if the it's over uh, three pounds. Now, large bulky, all right, that's uh goes up to max 59 by 33 by three inches. Now, five pounds or less, you're, you're paying a whopping $2 per unit, all right, or 267. But if you send to multiple locations, you receive a discount of up to 100% based on the number of shipments, all right? And, and by the way, this, the same thing happened to the other situation that I, I gave. Now, a uh, question is, hey, as a seller who uses Amazon warehousing and distribution, how will the inbound placement service fee uh, affect me, AWD, all right? So if you use AWD, you don't have to worry about this FBA inbound placement fee. They're, they're managing that. What about if you're using AGL, Amazon Global Logistics? How will that impact me? If it's large bulky, the inbound placement service doesn't apply to that ship through AGL. They're managing that. If it's standard size, it still applies. You're going to have to pay still uh, this uh, this fee here. All right. Now, if you use partner carrier program, that's what I do. You know, like UPS, you know, FedEx sometimes. How will the FBA inbound placement fee affect me? If you do it with a domestic shipment origin, you'll have the option to use the premium or discounted. So this whole thing applies to absolutely um, that. And you're going to get charged 45 days uh, uh, forty-five days after. Now, I just did a quick chart. Like I actually had some recent shipments that I did the same unit. And I had one where I sent it to one. I had some shipments where I sent it to multiple to kind of give you an idea of the different charges. So there's one where I sent all the units to one location 
and it was it, it worked out to about 70 cents each. Now, this is even shipping it to the middle of the country. I sent 24 units on a separate shipment to Stockton, California, which is West Coast, just like me, and it actually cost more, 93 cents a unit, because it was a smaller it was a smaller shipment. So in this case, it's like, all right, you can actually, you know, based on how Amazon charges you, it potentially could still be less even sending it farther away if you consolidate those uh, those shipments, all right? But remember, again, if you're shipping to three or four locations, that's going to probably increase the per unit price, right? So you're going to have to weigh out, is it going to be, you know, cost effective to to ship it to more lo locations or just one? Here's some other of our, my large coffin shelf, so like more of a bulky one. This one could eventually be like a $2 per unit sur uh, surcharge, right? Take a look at this. When I ship things to three different locations, Memphis, uh, I think Mississippi, and Washington, the Memphis and Mississippi one was $2.97 per unit I paid because it's a large bulky item. Now, that same 10 units to Washington was only $2.52. It's about a you know, $0.50 cents, uh, difference. Now, when I sent it to Missouri, it was $3.51. $3.51, almost a dollar more than the Washington. When I sent it to Rock Tavern, wherever the heck that is, uh, it was three sixty-five. dollars right? Now, th that was selling or sending 10 units each, right? When I sent to one location one time uh, a shipment of 44 units to Utah, it's like, you know, I don't know, about, about uh, you know, three-hour flight from here, two-hour flight from here, it was only $2.35. So, like, about $1.50 less than some of these other options or, or a dollar uh, less than some. Now, if I'm having to, you know, in any of these scenarios, pay over or pay up to $2 per unit placement, obviously that's going to completely affect what I am paying. So interesting as far as that goes. Let, 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 let's keep talking about the different fees that they uh, announced. They said, on average, we're going to actually decrease FBA fulfillment fees. All right. So this is the outbound. All right, that what we were talking about was inbound fulfillment fee rates for standard size products by 20 cents per unit. All right, so, so guys, you know, don't, don't sleep on this. It's they're, they're trying to like offset some of these other charges and they're going to lower the FBA fulfillment fees by a uh, large bulky size product by 61 units. All right, so if you are affected by these inbound things, here's something that can help out a little bit, <laughs> except these don't start until April 15th. All right, so you got a month and a half of of high FBA fees and high or high outbound fees and high uh, inbound fees. Now it's a, it mentions here products priced below $10 will continue to have an additional 70 cent discount on per unit fees. All right. Now there's going to be a, another savings um, when products opt into the existing packaging can ship in its existing packaging. They're going to have a fulfillment fee discount from 4 cents to a dollar uh, 32. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about that ships and product packaging. There's another article about that uh, a little bit later on uh, in the show. All right, now, next section here, it says, hey, in addition to inbound and placement, maintaining sufficient inventory levels also enables us to place inventory closer to customers across our network. All right, makes sense. I, we, we get it, right? You know, like, like if you only got 10 units, it's hard for them to distribute that around the country, and then they're going to end up having to pay more money to get it to a customer because you don't have enough inventory. So now they're going to have a new low inventory fee for standard size products. It says this applies if you carry consistently low levels of inventory relative to unit sales. All right. Makes sense. Okay. I get it. And sellers can avoid this fee by maintaining more than four weeks of inventory relative to sales. These fees will start April 1st. All right. So now this is kind of interesting because we need to know like how they calculate this out. Because you guys know, you know, the Amazon inventory, like forecasting, it's not great <laughs> uh, to, to say the least. I'm trying to be uh, diplomatic here. I'm not complaining as Helium 10, because otherwise, why would people need our Helium 10 inventory management, which I absolutely use? Uh, I've never looked at the Amazon one in a, a while because it's so terrible, it's so off. So like, if that's what's powering this, you know, maybe some sellers are a little bit, uh, a little bit scared. This, this fee, Absolutely makes sense, but obviously we're, you know, there's some worry about how it's going to be implemented. If you click into the details for the low inventory fee, for example, uh, if you have a small standard item up to a, a pound, you only have zero to 14 historical days of supply. You get an 89 cents per unit charge Whew. for that. All right. If you've got 14 to 21 historical days of supplies, 
you still get hit with a 63 cent charge. If you have up to 21 to 28 days, you know, it's pretty decent for some. I, I, I think sometimes I kept mine around there because I didn't want to pay any store, storage fees. It's still 32 cents you are now paying, all right? Uh, large is a little bit more and large standards is a little bit more, all right? So there, you can actually view your historical days of supply in your FBA inventory page. Now, I looked at mine and it's already there. And I don't know how in the world they're calculating this. It's so funny. Like, like th this is kind of really weird. Like, like Coffin Shelf, we have units in stock, but on this new page, it says out of stock. And then it says historical days of supply, 48 or uh, 38 units. So like it's, there's already some bugs on, on here, but I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll fix it. They got like four months to, uh, to fix this. Here's another one where it says my average inventory is 125 days. Yet on the same line, that same product, it says, hey, you've got low, low, low stock. It's like, come on, you know, which is it? Anyways, guys, check out your dashboard to kind of like look at this. Now, one interesting thing here, it says the historical days of supply metric is calculated at the parent product level. So all child products related to the same parent product will have the same historical days of supply. But what it doesn't say is, all right, how, how, is, how is that velocity? It, does it mean it's, it's the sum of all child units? You know, or is it just picking the the, the highest velocity? I know there's there's some questions you know uh, we we might have on this. All right, the ones that the low inventory fee won't apply to are new sellers in the first year of selling. All right, uh, new to FBA parent products for the first half year after the first time that they receive uh, inventory. All right, and also products that are auto replenished by AWD, which is Amazon Warehousing and distribution. All right. So there's a lot of like, kind of like sample examples of how they give. And yeah, you need to like just sit down with a, you know, carton of popcorn as your comfort food. Or, and also just like read this, you know, here, just, just take, take some time and read this. Cause there, I'm not going to go through all of it. There's like tons of scenarios and things like that. All right. So there's another interesting fee that has a lot of sellers worried about how that is going to be implemented myself included, you know, I'm, and I'm sure uh, we're going to have more uh, information uh, coming soon. Now, to help carry sufficient levels of inventory, because again, like we keep, like me, like I keep inventory levels down so I don't have to pay fees or too much in fees and storage, right? So to help with this, they're going to reduce the non-peak monthly storage fees for standard size products by an average of nine cents per cubic foot, all right? It's going from 87 cents to 78 from January to September, all right? So again, Amazon is not just trying to like this 100% raise they're they're trying to do other things that that hopefully will will offset some of these increased fees which is you know uh, commendable right there was a announcement in the same email about a reduction in apparel products fees we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later and there's some expanded benefits for new selection uh program etc now, now it's funny because they're, they're sellers you know who have tried to keep kind of like a, a sense of humor um, like there was one seller, uh, uh, Keith, he made this meme. That was kind of funny. And again, you know, no, no, I'm sure he didn't mean any disrespect here, but he's like, he made this meme and it says, Hey, you sell too much on Amazon, more fees. You sell too little on Amazon, more fees. Now, again, you know, it's nice to keep a you know sense of humor about these things, but now some of the things that you might be wondering, like here's some, here's some quotes from sellers and I'm going to try and get some of the answers to these uh, questions, you know, like uh, return processing fees. How are we going to audit? whether our products are really above the category benchmark. That was something in the fine print that was from uh, Ben. Um, the low inventory fee, hey, how, how are stockouts handled? What about discontinued products? What about seasonality, right? You know, Amazon's calculations on seasonality leave a little bit to be desired, Ben said. Uh, Jason talked about, you know, again, how, how is Amazon going to view inventory? You know, what about receiving time? You know, like, if I send my inventory in and it takes them six weeks to actually process it in, does that count as six weeks of, you know, like, does that six weeks count as far as my inventory on hand or it's not counted, you know, um, or am I going to be penalized because Amazon is too slow to receive inventory in? Very good. Uh, good point, Jason. Another seller said, hey, man, these placement fees of 30 cents per item is a little bit too much because I ship from outside of the USA and I get a better deal if I ship several boxes to one destination. Totally understandable. Um, Donna says, I don't want to be penalized for low inventory when Amazon has issues with their carriers delivering LTL shipments. Very similar to the other uh, statement from uh, Ben, I believe. All right. So that's another valid uh, question. Now, 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 it's not all negative, the, the comments out there. Tyler said, hey, I'm not the biggest fan of, of inbound placement fees for AGL shipments. But other than that, I believe I will pay less on net with the new structure. All right. So, hey, this is not just doom and gloom. You know, some sellers are like a little bit optimistic 
uh, about this. Other questions is like, all right, is this going to be for only for USA? What's going to happen in Europe? Uh, how often does Amazon calculate this four weeks of inventory? Um, let's say there's an ASIN that has multiple sellers, somebody said. Um, what is the sales velocity based on the ASIN or the individual sellers, you know, sales uh, velocity? What is that whole parent-child uh, velocity? How is that going to be calculated? How is the inventory going to be calculated? Somebody else asked. So there's a lot of questions that hopefully we'll get answers for in the coming uh, weeks. All right, let's keep going with the news. Let's completely switch gears now. Just a quick recap uh, from Walmart. They actually uh, mentioned something interesting. This was their biggest uh, sales day ever. Walmart Marketplace achieved its two biggest sales days ever, right? And especially those who sell on WFS, all right? It says it achieved its four highest volume sales days ever on Black Friday uh, through Cyber Monday. On Black Friday alone, WFS shipped nearly double the number of units than the year prior, all right? That's crazy. Like, can you imagine FBA's like, oh, yeah, we, we shipped double what we did here. So, so, you know, if you guys are not on Walmart WFS, it's, 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 it's definitely the place to go. Make sure to, to add your products there. Uh, sales are booming. Uh, those who sell on the platform. Another positive move by Amazon. Uh, this was announced by fortune.com is they're the, again, they're going after these scammers, right? Have you guys ever had issues where people ask for refunds and you look and, and the product never got returned? Well, there's like these crime syndicates out there that are organizing this stuff and Amazon is going after them. Uh, they're, they're suing them. And there's an article from Fortune that you can read uh, in, the, uh, in the show notes below about that. Now, next up, uh, announcement from Amazon Advertising says, Sponsor Display improves bid recommendations by supporting campaigns with video creatives. All right, so um, before, you could only get campaign recommendations for if you're using like the static old uh, image or logo or something for your display. But now if you've got the uh, custom creative, you are going to get bid recommendations for sponsor display campaigns. Uh, switching over to Shopify, there is a new news released by Shopify saying that, you know, last week we talked about Black Friday was only $4 billion, or not only, but it was a record $4 billion. But now they have the full details. Black Friday to Cyber Monday, $9.3 billion sold on the Shopify. Uh, Shopify platform. So again, Walmart, a lot of non-Amazon e-commerce marketplaces are also booming. Uh, Shopify is definitely uh, one of them. A uh, story coming out of Yahoo. Now, this is was part of actually that fee increase. Now, this was part of that fee increase I talked about, but now there's a fee decrease that that article mentioned, and it was apparel, right? So this article from uh, Yahoo and Bloomberg says Amazon targets Sheen with fee cuts for cheap apparel sellers. You know, uh, Sheen, you can buy, you know, clothes for really cheap. In that announcement, it said, hey, Amazon is cutting fees for merchants. This is kind of crazy. I got to talk to Carrie to see if this affects her because I think she sells in clothing and hers might be under $20. But take a look at this. Clothing below $20, the fees, guys, for clothing priced below $20, all right, it's going from 15% to 5%. You're only going to pay 5% commission. That's crazy, all right? It says the low the rates on clothing price from $15 to $20 will drop to 10%, all right? So that's that's kind of crazy. Like this is a significant this is not like one of those oh, we're going to give you 4 cents back. You know like the other thing that I mentioned. This is a, that's a significant chunk of change that Amazon is lowering now. You know, is Amazon going to say it's because of Sheen? You know, that that's probably just speculation here on Yahoo's part, but yeah, it, it makes sense. You know, Sheen is about the, you know, very low clothing. So this is kind of like a, a, a first ever sign that, hey, maybe it's Amazon's like, hey, we're not just going to sit back and let you guys take the low clothing uh, market. So interesting story coming out of, of um, Amazon on the lower fees. Does that affect you? How many people um, are selling clothing out there and are jumping for joy over this? All right. So it's not all doom and gloom today, guys. All right, uh, on your Seller Central dashboard, there was a notice says uh, update to MCF. So <laughs> let's we talk about fees going down. I, I tried to balance here here with my next story. That fees are going up again. All right, so MCF fees, multi-channel fulfillment, are going to increase an average of three point five percent across all delivery speed options. And again, they they correctly state, hey, this is below the six percent increase announced by other carriers. So if you want more information on that, check your Seller Central. Dashboard. Speaking of your Seller Central dashboard, there is a new dashboard within your dashboard. Uh, it's all, it's called the Similar Products Dashboard. It's that that part is not new, but what's new is now you can see demand for your products in the European and Japanese marketplaces with this dashboard. So go to the Similar Asins dashboard. 
you can get it linked to directly from the news on your dashboard or find it in the uh, menu. Uh, going to CNBC, another quick uh, note here. It says Amazon test grocery subscription service for Prime members. All right, so it's guys, it's not just sellers who are getting charged more by Amazon. Buyers are getting charged a little bit more, but they're just testing this out to see. They're testing this thing in three cities to pay $10 a month for access to fresh and whole food delivery orders on more than $35, all right? Before they had it kind of like for free and they said you had to have so much uh, you know, like maybe a hundred dollars or something like that to, to get the free delivery, but now they're testing out a separate pay. I still think that, that there's potential here for third party sellers to get into the, you know, if you can get products into the stores, you can get sales online and in stores. And I, 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 I tried to break into this in one of my older companies I was in, but Amazon wasn't having it in those days it was like 10 years ago, but I don't know. I, I might try and hit up my old food companies I used to work at and see if uh, I think this can be very lucrative to get your items into Whole Foods and and into the Amazon Fresh uh, program. Uh, next article, article going back to Yahoo says, Amazon no longer is going to accept Mo payments. All right, and this affected PayPal stock, which I don't think any of us really care about unless we invested heavily in PayPal. But this, this was just interesting to me. I, I had forgotten that Amazon was accepting Venmo as a payment. But I remember we announced that like last year. So like the weekly or two years ago. So like the weekly buzz has been going on so long. We are now announcing that things are canceled. And these are things that we announced that were just started, you know, within the last couple of years. So man, the weekly buzz is, is getting a little bit old, I guess. All right. Um, another thing that I talked about earlier was about the Amazon packaging. Right. And so there's an article that Amazon put out that kind of like talked a little bit more about this program. It says, get an inside look at how we're sending some of your packaging or some of your orders without Amazon packaging, all right? So this was an article geared towards buyers, right? To give them an idea. And it, it talks about their testing process and what sellers have to do to get their items approved for this uh, this program. So if you want to find out more about that program, you know, take a look at that. Another article by Reuters, uh, this was about Timu. And it's, again, I've always said that. I don't think that Timu and, and Sheen per se across the board are really dangers to amazon but what they are dangerous to is it I, I found it interesting this article talks about how timu is drawing shoppers from u.s dollar stores you know like i'm assuming like 99 cent store or dollar general or things like that so this article had some very interesting points about how they're taking market share in that market not from amazon but from like uh dollar stores uh last article today wall street journal this is actually a video that you can click on it says, Rom-Com meets shopping. Why Walmart launched a shoppable series. So Walmart had this 23-episode holiday rom-com series called Add to Heart, and it featured more than 330 products that consumers could buy while watching. All right, now that's interesting because, you know, I would have thought that Amazon Prime would have been, you know, or Prime TV would be first to this. And they kind of were, you know, especially recently with the Black Friday uh, football game, right? But... This could be interesting, you know, like I watch this video. I see potential here, you know, like I don't know if you, there's probably only a few of you who watch like Korean dramas like me. If you guys watch Korean dramas, you'll see that just naturally there's all these like mini ads in Korean dramas where they just happen to show this like coffee candy or, or this particular car, or this and that. And like imagine a, a world where it's like organically you'll see products in there, but then there might be a button or something you can click. Like, do you want to buy what this actress is wearing? Do you want to eat this candy that this actor is eating and things like that? That, that could be uh, interesting and another way to get like your product some some airtime. Anyways, guys, that's uh, going to be it for the news. As you can see, this episode was super, super long because we had so much to go over. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about what's going on with Amazon fees and what you're concerned about, what you're happy about. Uh, next week, uh, we'll be back and also, you know, talking more about um, about, you know, the things that Helium 10 launched, like Helium 10 did launch some stuff last week. I just didn't have time to talk about it. We'll talk about it next week. And also we'll go back to doing our training tips of the week. So I'll see you guys next week to see what's buzzing.